Okay, but with all of that that's going on, let's see, what are the attitudes towards um, the Creole language? Because attitudes, when we, when we look at a vitality, and, and as a sociolinguist, I always um, kind of, a, I am very apprehensive of a, saying that we have to go in this route or that route because we have seen it worldwide when um, languages are tried to, um, to enforce its maintenance and, you know, and not much is, is, um, is gotten out of it, okay? So the, for me, the most important thing is to look at the attitude of the speakers. How do they regard their language? How do they see their language? That will tell us a lot about keeping it alive, okay? Maybe not in the same form that our grandparents spoke it, okay? Because all languages, all living languages change over time. All living languages. The only languages that don't change over time are dead languages, okay? But all living languages change over time. So we look at attitudes and if there are good attitudes towards the language, there is hope, mm -hmm. okay? If the attitudes are negative, less hope, much less hope. So um, what have we seen over the last two decades or so? And these are worldwide movements. These are worldwide movements where minorities have taken a stand to not to disappear, but contrary, okay? to uphold and make visible their, mm. their culture and what they have offer and give to society, okay? And not to be just one dominant um, part of the, of the society to be present. And Limon is no different. Mm. We see in the last 20 years, there has been such a resurgence of rescuing values, um, not maybe not values, values have been there, but cultural aspects, okay? Um, cultural manifestations. So we see, for example, on the 31st of August of every year, the, the, um, the gra Grand Parade is celebrated, El Dia Negro y la Cultura Afrocostorricense. Now these things usually, things don't happen in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. And something that is usually linked to humankind is his language, his spirituality or, re or religion, and his food. Mm -hmm. Those things go with us for, 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 for long because we don't need to take them in a suitcase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? You take your spirituality with you. You take your food with you because you take your seeds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, if we go to Puerto Limon, we see the same um, fruit trees that you find in the Caribbean islands that you will not find in the rest of Costa Rica because of what? The people brought their seeds with them. You can bring your seeds with you in a suitcase. And of course, yeah, okay. Here is what we have now with this um, grand parade where these cultural manifestations are, are, are much more alive and well compared to maybe 30, 40 years ago in Puerto Limón, definitely. And of course that should impact language. Mm -hmm. That should impact language also, okay? Um, <clears throat> so when, oops, there's an error there in, um, in, um, in the writing language maintenance, there's an eye lacking in maintenance. Okay, uh, when you, this is um, a survey, field work done, I usually look at the younger people, folks, maybe in the, between the ages of 18, which is now there, 18, 20 plus and so. 
And when you ask them about maintaining the language, look, they, they, um, it's a very positive attitude, okay? Should Limon Creole be maintained? And 90% says yes. Limonese Creole should be maintained, okay? And only 10% says no. Okay, so that's a very positive attitude. And those are the things that give us hope. There is an understanding that language is an, an important part of the identity. Okay, there's that understanding, a very clear understanding as an important part of the of their identity. Um, When I ask a question, let me explain what that, what that means. Um, when I am asked um, their attitude towards people that um, um, only speak, um, no, if people should only speak um, Creole, okay, when, when I say people, let me explain, I don't mean every, everybody, I mean Afro, Costa Ricans, okay, um, because my soul raised usually among Afro Costa Ricans and not, not, not the other population. Because what I'm looking at is trying to understand the behavior towards the language. So when you ask, um, the question here is um, Should um, they speak Limonese Creole only? And we find 64% saying yes and 36% saying no, okay. So even though many of these that are in opportunity here cannot hold a conversation because that would be another another presentation, uh -huh, cannot hold a conversation, you have younger folks fully in Creole, but there's a positive attitude. There's a positive attitude, okay? Um, when we look at language attitudes, of course, I should have a disclaimer here because we know that many times when you ask questions, the answers are trying to um, guess what, you know, what you want to look at, okay? And, they, and, and, and that may be, I know there are other ways of, of uh, measuring attitudes that, that are guises, okay? We can use like the match guise to see if that attitude is really so, okay? If it's, there's a really positive attitude. But every time I look at attitudes and I've been looking at, at attitudes since the 1990s, and I always find positive attitudes towards the language, which there is an understanding, there's a clear understanding that um, it's part of the, of, 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 of the identity. Okay, and um, when I ask, which I didn't put that here, um, questions like, ¿Qué te hace Afro, Afro costarricense? Languages are always there. So they would put, um, my food, my language, and they would look at other, other aspects, okay, of it. But language is always, is always present, okay? And that, that's very positive. But what does it mean <clears throat> for us today? Since we have a, many speakers, especially as they get as they, as the, the younger ones are not fluent in Creole anymore. What does that mean for them? Well, lately I've been looking at certain strategies that they use to keep the Creole alive in many ways and that is borrowing forms and code mixing okay and code switching using and creating new forms in that are that are neither spanish and that they are neither creole yeah. but they're they're these are hybrid forms these forms are a mixture of both languages okay and 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 that is very telling because you know when you go to and you hold, try to hold the conversation in Creole only among young people to see the levels of um, fluency in both languages, we see an, a lot of hybrid forms mm -hmm. surfacing, okay? 
a lot of borrowed words and I won't give you a list because the list could be everlasting. Um, but borrowed words, we know we hear them and these borrowed forms start very early on, okay? That our parents or grandparents use, for example, bombero, okay? Even older people use bombero, fire, fire for a firefighter. We use the word basura, basura, okay? Mm -hmm. And that is not just us from now, but we see that that borrowing be, started um, earlier, early, early on, brother. And we can think of different words, like tapa for the pot, the, the tapa, all right? Mm -hmm. A tapa the lid, or we can think about words like um, um, many other words that we can that I think we can find like pila, the pila, okay. But we we make we make it cruel. We don't say pila. No, we don't say pila. La pila. We say the pila, okay. Uh, we don't say la basura. We say when we speak in Spanish we say but la basura, but when we speak in cruel we say basura, okay. And so on. So that's very in that is very important because we borrow and we creolize it. Okay. The, co the community, I, I say we, I should be speaking in we, but since I'm a member of the community, okay, and I went through all these processes of, um, of, uh, of and I've seen the process of, 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 of acquiring Spanish and my parents acquired Spanish and grandparents could not speak Spanish and so on and so on and so on. So I, as I as the presenter, shouldn't say we, but we um, those forms are noticed over and over. And anyone listening, you could check yourself as you speak Creole, okay, with your neighbors and friends, and so. And how many times you inject a um, Spanish forms, okay? And the code switching between a, I'm using English, Creole, and Spanish. And that is very common. Um, but you know, when languages are in contact, that happens. When we listen to a um, to Bob Marley singing in um, is reggae. Just listen to a reggae, and you hear moving. In, he moves in nicely from Creole to standard English. Okay, and he moves out, and he comes back in. When we have languages in contact, that usually happens. Okay, that usually happens, and 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 um, that's part of languages being in contact. Other there are other forms. I said not just by the long list of words that we could give, and the, the list could be um, eternal, but that is not the purpose, because then we'd have to look at words that are borrowed just for a moment, but the speaker still still use um, and, and the, um, the Creole or the English form. For example, if I say um, botica, okay, we say botica, but we can, sometimes we can, we say pharmacy, the drugstore, okay? So those forms are not completely in the Creole yet, because they are going to the drugstore, going to the botica, okay? It's, you would have to make a list of the forms that are now, only borrowed from Spanish and they have been creolized and the um, and there is no other form. Am I, am I, you know, I hope I'm explaining myself, okay? Like when we say, hey, we, we use basura or when we say the pila, okay? That form as, is there and that's the one we use mm -hmm. always for trash. We talk about the basura, the basura pan, and so on. Okay, so let's see. But we said there are also hybrid forms, okay, that we find in the speech. And I'm just going to give one example of hybrid forms. That um, these are language strategies, discourse strategies that we that are used as we keep as the um, population of the speech community tries to keep his language alive. So we see, for example, let's see some words here. Uh, how to make progressives? How do we make a, a progressive? We take a form from Spanish, 
Okay, we see here and we give it the infinitive, the R, the third and R, and we make it progressive this from here to here Spanish and from here to here is Creole. Yeah. Okay, so in this ordinary of the room. <laughs> okay, so I make it. It's it's um so that's not that's not just borrowing forms, but we we are mixing structure. Okay, we are oh. using the progressive way I use part of it in Spanish. Okay, the up to here with the infinitive or the ordinary in Spanish, and then I make the in the progressive from Creole. And the same thing with bacillar. And many times is we bacillar where we say bacillar in Spanish, we're speaking Spanish, but we bacillar, mm -hmm. bacillar in Creole. Okay. So many times we don't have a word for bacillar in Creole. So this word has become a, a, we don't have it in Creole. So we took it from Spanish. Okay. Wow. And it's bacillar. And but we can make it also in the progressive. In bacillar in your man. <laughs> Okay, say in Basilario, if we don't say in Basilando, you mm -mm. say we in Basilaring. Mm -hmm. Okay, true, 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 true. You okay, <laughs> uh, the same thing with coquetier. Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't say in coquetiando with you, in coquetier with you. Okay, and so on, bular, batear, and so on. So this is for me. It's it's very telling. It's very rich, and it it says a lot about um, a community that is in contact with a with a language which is is standard, and it's not only the standard, but it's also the language of a um, that is much more used, more more widely used in in the speech community, and it could really we see a resistance. What I see is a resistance over time, and here I come with my conclusions, to keep the um, Creole mm -hmm. alive. So I would say, I don't want to give the impression that Limonese Creole enjoys the blessings of the community. Okay, we'll fall. There is still a lot of resistance between certain sex sectors, which directly affects its decline among young people. You find in some members of the speech community that they yeah, um, openly and knowingly will pass on the language to their kids. Some of them are not a, they are not, it's not an, a, 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 a step that they make willing, willingly or willfully just by, um, sometimes it's just by, by default. Oh. Because they have become a um, maybe it's it's easier for them because the kids speak Spanish already because of their neighbors speak Spanish and in the school they speak Spanish so it's easier for the mom to speak Spanish instead of him so, so by default they're passing it on but some of them are still by design and you hear it okay I didn't teach my kids Spanish I heard it not too long ago okay and um, you say you know, I didn't I didn't teach my kids um, Creole or anything like that because I and, and attitudes that are not the best of attitudes for the language and I think it's because we don't understand that it's 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 a language is your identity mm -hmm. and that's something that I I I um, I want us to, to 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 bear in mind a language is your identity we are we are our part of us is our language. And there's nothing wrong in the language. There is nothing wrong in the language. The Bible is, we have Bible written in Creole and we have Bible written in English and Bible written in Spanish and all that. So if you can write the Bible in Creole, okay? In San Andres, they have their, bi their Bible in Creole. If something as profound and as complex as the Bible can be written in a Creole language, that is enough to tell us that it is a language. But this is a process of how can we decolonize mm -hmm. our mentality, mm -hmm. okay? Because this, this is the whole colonial process 
of everything that belongs to us was evil or bad or um, negative. So our spirituality is bad and evil. Our tongue is lazy and bad and evil. Our hair is bad and uh, yeah, bad is bad. And our movements and our dance is is corrupt. And so even though it is taken and and we reworked, appropriated, mm -hmm. uh -huh, and and um, and appropriated. There's an appropriation. So uh, when we we hear those negative comments still 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 i sent you something not too long ago okay um yes i have a, 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 a these negative attitudes but my i would say that the um, <clears throat> there is hope because when there is meeting with the younger folks they have a different mentality in general even though they may may not be fluent and they cannot hold a long conversation in Creole, but they have a different mentality, okay? Okay, um, so we have all these um, attitudes that you don't spend money and effort and time teaching Creole because all that effort and time and money must go in teaching English because that will, it, that's the upward mobilizer. Not understanding how important it is to keep your identity in the same way that we have El Dia del that's why I started out with the, um, and I hope that we could tie those things together. The, on the 31st of August, uh, yeah, yes, where we get dressed in our, for the great, in the Grand Parade, what we're doing, highlighting, um, bringing forward all of those um, aspects that are part of our culture and are part of our identity. The same pride we take in, in our cuisine, in our, you know, the artistry of presenting our foods. And so we should also take that same pride in our language and the understanding that there are um, Creole languages that become national languages and official languages. For example, Haitian Creole, okay? has become, and also top is in, as I mentioned before, okay? Um, they, these languages, and I think more and more, we will see that as the um, minority communities, sorry, um, become much more empowered and much more of understanding that these are, this is what we bring to the table, that this is what we have um, part of our, our contribution to, to, to society, okay? And that it, it should not be um, stayed back in, in a corner. Okay, so these are some of these um, language strategies that I mentioned before, oops, 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 okay? So we should also, what I'm saying here is that we should not look at these um, um, strategies and I just gave you a taste of some of the strategies that um, we use as we as we blend forms from both languages, Spanish and our Creole. That is, I see that as an extremely complex and creative phenomenon. Okay, that allows the speakers to use his language because he's not using Spanish. <laughs> Can I say uh -huh. I'm not speaking Spanish. I've, I've take the speaker has taken a form from Spanish and he has made it his. Uh -huh. He has creolized it in the phonology and also in the structure. Because one thing is basilar, and another thing is basilar. Basilar uh -huh. has a different rhythm and a, a different phonology. And then I do basilarin, okay, mm -hmm. as I explained before. The lack of such devices, I would say, would have meant a much deeper erosion of a language that is an important part of the identity of the Af Afro Costa Rican community of Liman. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Somos voces de la historia, sangre, tinta y papel. 
somos voces de la historia Mis ancestros, su saber Mis ancestros, su saber Mis ancestros, su saber Pao y ajao Pao y ajao 